and uh, I watched the highlights from SmackDown. I, I didn't get a chance to see SmackDown in its entirety yet, although I will say this. Uh, I heard you talk about it with Dave a little bit uh, on, on the show you did, uh, Observer Radio. And from what I saw from the highlights, the Charlotte and Naomi match actually does look good. And the thought of Los Lotharios in a feud with the New Day, even though probably in the end it really won't help Los Lotharios, I'm good with that too. So those are the two things I'm looking for in full. From what I saw from the rest of it, nah, I'll be doing a lot of fast-forwarding. You know, that main event, uh, I had heard it was really good, and uh, it was. I watched it last night. It's always funny because I had so much stuff that I had to do this weekend, so I didn't watch SmackDown until Sunday night. And so, uh, you know, I was really impressed with the main event. And uh, I had been, uh, I have been in the past critical of uh, certain things that Naomi has done. And, of course, if you say anything critical about Naomi, for example, people, you know, they splice it out and put it all over the internet so you just look like a horrible human being. But anytime I actually do say something nice about Naomi, no one ever splices that and puts it out on the internet. So I went out of my way to point out that Naomi and Charlotte had this really good match. And you'll never guess what happened. Oh, you just now watched it? (laughs) You were too busy this weekend to watch it on Friday? I'm like, you can't win for losing. No good wow. deed goes unpunished. Oh, well, but uh, well, I actually put upon Brian. listen. I I uh, I have been impressed with Naomi for the last couple of weeks now. Not just her uh, her in ring, but the stuff she's been doing backstage with Naomi. I think that she just now has a, a program, Sonya. That's, Sonya, yeah, that that's easy for her to sink her teeth into. And Naomi's like a, a great heel. And I I just thought that uh, no, Sonya's a great heel. Oh, I'm talking about this Naomi. the Naomi Sonia thing. I know, but you said Naomi right there, and I wasn't sure if you meant Charlotte or Sonia. But I guess you. Meant I'm doing Sonya. a bit based on talking about my my wrestling career starting at 14. But anyway, I think that Naomi has been great with Sonia when they're doing their back and forths and everything like that. And I thought that she was great in the ring with Charlotte in the main event of SmackDown, and uh, it was a good match. They had some good near falls. And uh, at the end, she uh, she didn't win, but um, I thought they had a very very good match. Great near falls, near falls where I saw a bunch of those this weekend. I saw one in the uh, the Nick Wayne Chris Daniels match where uh, Daniels stayed down till the absolute very last second, and you know grown men and women leaped out of their seats thinking Nick Wayne won the Defy title, and uh, they were also crying afterwards when he got his contract. And there was one here that, like, everybody thought for sure Naomi won the title. Which, when you think about it, it's like, they've already announced Charlotte and Ronda Rousey for WrestleMania. I mean, you know, it's ridiculous, the idea that Naomi would beat Charlotte for the title. But, I mean, I'm sure people thought, you know, she could win it and then lose it back or whatever. But I thought that uh, that, that match was great. 35-year age difference between Christopher Daniels and Nick Wayne. 35 years. I mentioned it last night. When I started, okay... Actually, in a ring. This was after my my taking bumps at 14. Chris Daniels was already a grizzled vet. Like, he was a man spoken about in hushed tones. And here he is in 2022, still wrestling as Defy World Champion. So, uh, he's... He's incredible. You know, Ring of Honor is inducting people, and obviously we're going to get to this with Samoa Joe being nominated and, and into the Hall of Fame there. But, like, if if Ring of Honor was going to do some sort of thing where they talked about the pioneers and who, who, who the inspirations were to set up Ring of Honor, like, Christopher Daniels would be one of those people. It's still, it's a staggering thing that he is around in as good a condition as he's in. This is the guy that could have been the higher power, believe it or not. This is the guy that was on Nitro. And now we have people that pay homage to Nitro over and over and over again. Christopher Daniels was there. That should be the name of his book. I was there. No matter what it was, junior heavyweight revolutions, you know, ECWA, these great tournaments that took place, the West Coast when that was strong in the 90s and pumping out talent. I mean, it's just, it's an amazing, amazing career. We also had the, uh, what else do we have on SmackDown I mean, yes, Los Lotharios. You know the thing that with Loth I'm gonna review all of SmackDown with Filthy here in about uh in about a half hour here, but the thing with uh with Los Lotharios, I liked that they beat the New Day, okay? And I thought they had a pretty good match. But um the thing was 
I've seen New Day have these matches over the last month now that have been just great. And near fall, kick out, near fall, kick out, near fall, kick out, near fall, kick out. Your shirt's over, kick out. I'm not, I'm not saying this is bad. I'm just saying these matches were great. Then on SmackDown, I think we had one near fall, and then Kofi just got cradled and pinned out of nowhere. And it came across as like a total fluke. They played it up like it was a big win, but, I mean, when you watched it, it's like, well, that's kind of fluky. And Los Lotharios slide out of the ring, and, you know, I, I, they need to push new talent, okay? We know this. And Los Lotharios will, like, get a win, and then the next week they'll lose. And then the next week they'll beat the New Day, and then it feels like, you know, they're going to go do whatever, and they'll lose that match. And, I mean, listen, you, whatever. The, the company made a billion dollars. WrestleMania is going to be huge. Like, who am I? Who are all of us? It doesn't matter. They can do whatever they want. But these people are not going to get over. That's the problem. It's just going to be, you know, it's WWE. They're the number one company in the world. They create their content. They sell their content. And they make their money, and that's it. But, like, engaging your fans, getting people over... You know, making stars. It's never going to happen the way they book. Like, if you're going to push Los Lotharios, they should be winning all of these matches. I know this sounds antiquated, but, like, every other promotion on the planet in 2022 is making stars by not beating them. Meanwhile, this company is, like, 50 50 everybody. There are zero stars. But, like, the idea is, oh, you know, wins and losses aren't important, blah, 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 blah. Well, it seems like they are. Unless you're idiot-proof. But anyway, I'll ask you what the uh, yeah. I'm complaining the, that they got a win. Yes, that's actually happening here on the air. But there's a point to it. Go ahead. I'll ask you what the more likely scenario is tonight. Then does Austin Theory win because he lost last week? Does probably he lose? does he lose or does he not do either one? But just takes a bunch of finishers from everybody else leading into the elimination chamber. Wait, what's the match tonight? Uh, he doesn't have one yet. But he, oh, I, I thought would you had some sort of match with him. No, I mean, just what, what do, you, do you think he'll actually win a match, lose a match? I mean, because, again, he's one of those guys that should have been winning nonstop. And when you have a, a Kevin Owens that couldn't go to Saudi Arabia, didn't want to go to Saudi Arabia anyway, and you gave Austin Theory a win, why not just have him beat Kevin Owens last week or just beat somebody last week just to show he's, you know, a winner? I don't know, dude. I don't know. Okay. There was an incident last week where I lost my mind and uh, attempted some gory self-mutilation. Trini, stop that! No! I don't believe my own eyes anymore. What, what, I, what, what I think I see, they're telling me I didn't see. All right? <laughs> but that's what happened. Okay, so seven days ago, seven days ago, he shaved his own head. He goes back here. I swear to God, his hair's back again. <laughs> well, like, nothing happened. I'm trying to hang on. I'm trying... Desperately to grip on reality, and every time I, I, every time I think I'm there, every time I think I'm safe and stable, Duke Hudson's hair changes again. His motivation changes again. Something about Dante Chen. If you enjoy these videos for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.